Brother Michael will be ministering to us this, this morning from John chapter 8 and verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. Thank you, Brother Judah. <clears throat> Here in John chapter 8, <clears throat> this is kind of a day, what it was like for Jesus in the temple. This is just one example. John chapter 8. <clears throat> this is the eighth um, in this series of messages of ten gospel axioms in which we want to establish the good things declared for us in the gospel and affirm these things to our hearts. So far we've shown the scriptures that the kingdom of God has come unto you, that all our debt were dead and one died for all, that salvation is by grace, not of works, that the Lord is with us, that we will obtain the inheritance, that there is another rest and another day, that we are Abraham's seed and heirs, and that we are children of God, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. And today we want to answer this question, who are truly Jesus' disciples? And as with all of the other texts, this will be uh, answered with an if-then statement. <clears throat> John 8, 31, which Brother Judah has already read, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Now in this eighth chapter of John, this is the day after uh, the, the day of the great feast, recall in John chapter 7, when Jesus stood up in that great day of the feast and declared, If any man thirst, let him come unto me. And uh, he met with some enmity there in the temple, and he left and he spent the night on the Mount of Olives, John 8, verse 1 says. Then verse 2, John chapter 8 says, He came early in the morning to the temple again, and all the people were gathered unto him, and he sat down and taught them. So here he is in the temple again. But before this time was over in the temple, the last verse of John chapter 8 says, Then they took up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. So there are some things that happen between coming in early in the morning, all the people. I thought, this is, we might get to experience something like this sometimes. There might be a great gathering, like the North American Christian Convention or something. And all the people will be gathered unto us to hear, to hear what we have to say. The Lord will do that kind of thing. Anyway... All the people are gathered to him, you recall. Now this is when <clears throat> they brought the woman caught, taken in adultery, and sat her in the midst of them. This is when Jesus was in the temple. <clears throat> and you recall how that ended, that Jesus wrote something on the ground, and one by one, from the eldest down to the last of them, they all left without saying any more. I want to give you some excerpts of John chapter 8, just to let you know how this was a, uh, is probably the most heated discussion, at least that we have on record, the most heated discussion that Jesus had with the scribes and the Pharisees. At verse 12, Then Jesus spake again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself, thy record is not true. Verse 24, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Then they said unto him, Who art thou? Verse 32, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Verse 38, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Verse 41, ye do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, we be, born, we be not born of fornication. We have one Father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your Father, ye would love me. 
For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. Verse 47, he that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Verse 51, Verily I say unto you, If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead. Whom makest thou thyself? Verse 56, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Amen. Then they took up stones to cast at him. And he left. There's, this is just a day in the temple with Jesus now. Quite a conversation, isn't it? <clears throat> Amen. But now, don't miss it. Right in the middle of this, literally in the middle of the chapter, in the midst of this heated argument, is our text. This is where Jesus says to the Jews that believed on him, If you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. I thought that's actually a very fitting place to say that. Because here are the scribes and Pharisees served as a negative example to demonstrate the truth of what Jesus said. They openly opposed him in the temple. They conspired against him. They could not receive his word. They remained hardened against the truth and could not be taught of God. And they remained this way unto their deaths. And they suffered the severe judgment of God because of it. <clears throat> So Jesus' word to believers then is continue in my word. Amen. It's as if Jesus is asking us, do you really believe? Are you really my disciples or do you want to be my disciples? Then continue in my word. Do you want to know the truth? Do you want to be truly free? Because if you are my disciples, I'll teach you and you will be free if you learn from me. Discipleship, knowing the truth and being made free are all contingent upon hearing the word of Jesus. Not just starting in his word, and not continuing in church tradition. He did not say, if you keep on obeying, or if you obey my teaching, which is how some Bible versions have translated it, but that's not what he said. Jesus didn't come with a new set of commandments to give us. Jesus did not say, if you obey my word. He said, if you continue in my word. Now, although these two do travel together, if you continue in his word, you will obey. They go together, but they're not synonyms. Continue does not mean obey, and obey does not mean continue. And also, we'll make an issue of this, he says, my word, not my commandments. Again, if you... If you receive and continue in Jesus' words, you will obey, but, but word does not mean commandments. That's the word that Jesus brought was not commandments. So it's not the same thing. Also take note that he says word, not words. Now this, this word, word, is a very profound word. I, I sought to just kind of define this and explain this, and this is not so easy to do. It's a, well, Jesus was the Word. In the beginning was the Word, so how are you going to, how are you going to take a couple of minutes and just define that satisfactorily? Well, this is, this is still a very profound thing that he says here, continue in my Word, not words. A little bit of Greek here. Everyone, just about everyone knows the Greek word for this is logos, or logos, however you prefer to say it. Now, this means the subject of discourse, reasoning, motive, a computation, doctrine, intent, 
preaching, tidings, treatise. And this is the same word used in John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. Same, same Greek word. And now the Greek word for words, plural, is rhema. Totally different. It means an utterance or the topic of a narration. A saying. So basically words are the sounds coming from your mouth. The words are what's printed on the page. But that's different from word. Jesus has, Jesus gave a word. <clears throat> the word involves a message that is declared and it's to be reasoned upon. To find its intent and doctrine. A word is delivered in the package of words but the words carry tidings that require to, the hearer to do some computation mm -hmm. and find the motive in the word. Amen. Just because you hear words doesn't mean you've heard the word. Mm -hmm. The word of Christ is unique because it transcends everything else. Christ came and brought to us things that were kept hidden from the foundation of the world. Even, even unbelievers said, never man spake like this man. See, it was, a, it was the message that came in his words. It was his word that was transcendent over everything else. Not, so Jesus is not just talking about the sounds that he came from his mouth, the, the words that he spoke, although that contained his word. But he's talking about a message from heaven that's revealed only by the Holy Spirit. Only Jesus' word has life. Amen. His word has power. Hearing Jesus' word is more than just you being given something to do. It is to be believed. That is, I can't, you can't get away from this. The primary association with the word is believing it. Amen. Believing the word. That's what it's given for and everything else comes from that. If you want to know what to do when you, when you hear the word and you believe it, you'll know what to do. It'll, it'll come with that. <clears throat> Now, laws and rules do not require the ministry of the Holy Spirit for understanding. Ordinances do not do, need to be revealed. They are just to be obeyed, whether you understand it or not. That's what laws and commandments are for. But this is not the nature of the Word. <clears throat> the Word makes men free. So we don't need more rules. We need revelation. And if men believe what has been revealed, then they will be obedient. And the, the word of Christ is a message primarily about himself, about what he has done. This is the reason that the scribes and the Pharisees argued with Jesus and hated him. It's not because he gave them some different commandments. Let's not forget these men were masters of commandments, of Moses' law. They had, they had broken it down almost to the microscopic level of what you can do and what you can't do and just the extent of what you're able to do and when you've got to stop and when you've got to start. And they had, they had commandments. They, these were commandment-keeping men, but they could not receive the Word. So Jesus' Word, again, I'm emphasizing that, that we're not talking about a new set of rules. That's not what continuing in the Word is. <clears throat> His Word was offensive to them. To think that this Galilean man is the Messiah, that he was sent from God, or to think that he would talk about things like men eating his flesh and drinking his blood. They couldn't receive that. That he would allege that he himself is God and was sent from God, and that he was before Abraham our father. That he would imply that any of us are in bondage. And furthermore, that he's the one that could free us. Saying that he is the light of the world. They had just, who are you making yourself out to be? They, they couldn't receive. Yeah. See, they, they saw some of the implications of what he was saying. That's, and that's the word. Or part, at least part of the word. And they couldn't receive that. <clears throat> it was far too much for them. They couldn't possibly fit Jesus into their religious system. <clears throat> the message of it, the implications of it were too new, too powerful, and too opposed to the comfortable religious system that accommodated their flesh. The word of Jesus is that salvation is not in you and not about you. You can't earn it or find it or bring it or keep it. 
but salvation is in the man, Christ Jesus. Amen. John 1, 12 and 13 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And I want to tie that in with something Jesus said in John 6, 45. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. <clears throat> Every man therefore that hath heard, to hear the word, and hath learned of the Father, cometh unto me. And someone's already mentioned this today. I believe it was Brother Aaron. It takes considerable amount of power to become the sons of God. Consider these things. To be one of God's sons, you must be delivered from the bondage of sin. And not only the guilt of sin past, but from the lure and the power of present, present temptation to sin. Yeah. To become the sons of God, you're going to have to get rid of the hard heart and have a heart of flesh. You're going to have to be transformed by the renew renewing of your mind, because the carnal mind is enmity against God and cannot receive the things of God. You're going to have to be conformed to the image of His Son, because His Son is the only man that God receives. You're going to have to be strengthened with might by the Holy Spirit, so that Christ can dwell in your hearts by faith. You're going to have to crucify the flesh, mortify the deeds of the body, put off the old man and put on the new man, because no sinner is going to heaven. You're going to have to suffer for Christ and with Christ. You're going to have to run with patience and fight the good fight of faith and, faith and wrestle against principalities and powers and continue and endure in this unto the end. You're going to have to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now, think about that. You have to, the, the children of God have to be capable of doing this. Your brother Given occasionally sends emails out to us of correspondence mm -hmm. from other people that they sometimes just pure quackery, some things that people are teaching. Sometimes you can see it right away and there's other times it's very subtle. That's right. There's just a very gentle shift mm -hmm. away from what Jesus said, what the apostles said. Sometimes I have to read it two or three times. Ah, there it is. Yeah. That's not right. Well, this is this is part of the ability that the children of God have got to have, this casting down ima imaginations and high things. You've got to be able to detect this. What I'm saying now, this is all, it's, it takes some power to become the sons of God. You can't get all this on your own. You can't get any of it on your own. And, and we could go on and continue to make a very long list of things that are necessary. But in order to do these things and be this kind of people, it takes power that none of Adam's race has. Yeah, Sons are the only people that God receives. Hard hearts don't get in. The old man and the old ways don't get in. Those who are not conformed to Christ's image aren't going to heaven. No son of Adam is going to heaven. It takes power to become the sons of God. Now, tying this in with John 6, 45... Every man, therefore, that hath heard and learned of the Father cometh unto me. Mm -hmm. This is where you get this power in hearing Jesus' word mm -hmm. and believing it. All those who come to God burdened with sin and the desire to become one of his sons, God sends them to Jesus. Yep. My son will help you. Yeah. Amen. Jesus has a word for you, and if you will listen mm -hmm. and continue in his word, you will be his disciple, and he will teach you. Jesus will transform you and equip you with every necessary thing. Now, you can't be a disciple without being taught something. Yeah. At the out, very outset of our race, Jesus is teaching us his word, and his word gives life. We don't see it all at the beginning. It has to, it gradually, it opens up to us. We don't see as much uh, we didn't see as much then as we see now, but Jesus taught us, we started with basic things, like that our sins are taken away, that they were really laid on Him, and that we have been gladly forgiven by God. Jesus teaches Himself, that is, that He's the one that does this. His Word is about who He is and who sent Him and what He accomplished in His life on earth 
His death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. All these, I'm just quickly listing these things, but you know that each of these things are exceedingly large subjects that are expounded and opened up in the gospel. This is Jesus' word. That's his word. <clears throat> his word has a unique and certain direction or an emphasis. We could even say there is spirit of Christ's word. <clears throat> But Jesus' word is not just a set of facts. We're not talking about, for lack of a better way to say it, church doctrine, like you see in a lot of bulletins. Here's what we believe, and it's very short, <clears throat> and most of them are similar. Jesus' word is not like a set of facts that you just memorize, and when you got it down, then you've attained everything. It's, no, it's more than that. It's much larger than that, <clears throat> and it's something that, is to be believed and to be continued in. <clears throat> the scriptures liken the word of God to a seed. <clears throat> when it's planted in good ground, it grows and produces fruit, and the, the fruit expands, and it expands in us. And this is a, a process of growing. And some people, when they, they might receive the seed at first, <clears throat> but as it begins to open up in the ramifications of Jesus' word, the implications of Jesus' word. As it begins to grow and expand, some people find things that they don't want. Some, some people come to a point and they stop. They'll willingly accept forgiveness of sins and going to heaven. They'll willing, willingly accept becoming God's children and the love of God. But when they find that being one of God's sons involves bearing a cross then they can't continue in his word. True disciples do not resist transformation, but they earnestly desire it. When many people come to the point where truth is abrasive to the flesh, then they can't continue in Jesus' word. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes shall be they of his own household." He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Some people gladly accept forgiveness of sins, but when they find out the gospel also declares deliverance from the power of sin, meaning you have to stop sinning. Oh, that's too much now. That's too much. We can't, they can't continue in his word. That stops them in their tracks. Or others stop when they learn this. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Others stop being taught by Jesus when they hear, They that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Many cannot receive that word. Many cannot receive this word, that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. For, the works, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And again, we could go on and on with a long list of things. The new covenant, though God has covenanted, <clears throat> that I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts Amen. and will be their God and they shall be my people and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor saying know ye the Lord and every man his brother for they shall know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them saith the Lord for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. Now I know we have to also realize that some people know God to a greater extent than others. <clears throat> Simp many times simply by reason of time. <clears throat> Some have learned more of God because they've walked with him for a longer time. For example, little Sarah Dill does not know God to the same extent that Brother Gibbon does, but she does know God. Mm -hmm. And she has, she has believed and she has acted upon what she knows and she will increase 
it, which he in continuing in the word of Christ. She's already done that. <clears throat> so the word of God is given in a seed form and we grow in our understanding of it. But there's never, there's room for growth, mm -hmm. but there's never room for rejection of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a different matter. <clears throat> When a person can no longer receive Jesus' word, or as the Apostle Paul puts it, when they will not endure sound doctrine, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, then they can no longer be his disciple. <clears throat> but now enough of the negative side of this. <clears throat> I want to talk about the word of Christ <clears throat> some more. What is the word of Christ? I hope this is... This is simplifying it. I hope it's not oversimplifying it, but it basically it is the gospel. Now, of course, the brethren here understand what, what I mean when I say the gospel. You all understand that that's very large. That's not like a three-minute discussion, what the gospel is. But there are a lot of people that don't understand that. They, you say, preach the gospel every Sunday, and they look at you like you're from outer space. What? Every Sunday? You, just the gospel? That's all? I mean, won't we get bored with hearing that over and over? See, people don't understand. So I'm not, I don't want to make this sound too simple. But basically, that is the word of Christ. It's the gospel, yeah. which, is, which starts in Genesis and goes all the way to Revelation. It takes some discernment to see it. <clears throat> it requires continuing in his word, and then Jesus will teach you. You'll be his disciple. He'll open it up to you how large the gospel is. <clears throat> If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples. Continuing in his word means more than just reading the words that Jesus said on the pages, although that is necessary. <clears throat> now this word continue is an interesting word. You might think that it means forward motion, but actually it's the opposite. The Greek word translated as continue means to stay, mm -hmm. abide, dwell, endure, remain. Stand and tarry. So really, we're, we're talking about believing Christ's word. <clears throat> That's what it's for, is to be believed. Paul said, be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, which is another way of saying continue in Jesus' word. <clears throat> it has no effect upon you if you do not believe it. <clears throat> There's no value in studying the scriptures if you don't believe what you're reading. Continuing in Jesus' word also means believing when it is preached and when the saints are used by God to declare the word. <clears throat> We've had uh, examples and testimonies of this in our assembly here lately where Brother, Brother Ricky was convicted about something he saw in himself and he shared that with the brethren. Brother Aaron has spoken of how that the Lord is teaching him in preparing to preach in, in different and better ways. And Brother Given has spoken to us about listening, getting close to God, where you just hear the voice behind you, turn this way. <clears throat> all, all thine ears shall hear, a, shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. What is all of that? That's, that's continuing in his word, and Jesus is teaching us. He's, that, this is, we're being taught. We're seeing this being lived out. <clears throat> We may not speak about it openly, but all of us are probably, I certainly am, dealing with self-examination and things I see in myself and things that I don't like that I, I intend to stop and things that I need to advance in and, and uh, things that need to be put away and areas that you need to increase in and improve in, things that you don't, had not seen clearly before, but now you do see it clearly. What is all that? That's... Jesus is teaching you because you're his disciple and because you've continued in his word. Yes. Now, if you, if, which is believing, if you, and if those who don't continue in his word, this, this discipleship stops. Not, it doesn't taper off, it stops. And the great danger is when Jesus stops teaching someone, he doesn't announce it to them. I'm not teaching you now. That's not the way it works. You can keep going to church, be an elder, yeah. be looked up by all the pe it pe looked up to by the people in the church, and they may come and ask you questions and ask your advice and this kind of thing. But Jesus won't tell you. Jesus won't tell a person who is living in unbelief. He won't tell them, "I'm not teaching you anymore." So there's 
there's a very great danger. You end up back where Jesus delivered you from, out of bondage. You end right back up in, in bondage. Yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> we have, uh, when we continue in Jesus' word, there are also some very good benefits that are available to the saints. Jesus said to the church in Philadelphia, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. How about that? Jesus says, I'll, I've opened a door. It's, I've already done it. I've opened a door, and no man can shut it. That's a good word. And that's because they continued, they kept his word. <clears throat> not because they were of service to the community. <clears throat> The prominence of Christ's word is spoken about here in this 138th Psalm. <clears throat> I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Of all the things that God has known for, he has magnified his word above all. Mm -hmm. Now aren't you glad that Jesus spoke a lot? Amen. And John said, if, if we were to wrote, write down everything that he said and did, the, the world couldn't contain the pages. <clears throat> Where would we be if Jesus never said anything? It's his word that drew us and saves us. It's his word that his enemies found offensive and caused them to stumble. If Jesus just had continued healing the sick and the lame and casting out demons and raising the dead and, and feeding multitudes, no one would, he would never have been crucified. <clears throat> but it is what he spoke. <clears throat> if, he would not, if he would have kept quiet, what would the Holy Spirit teach us? If you think about all the parables that Jesus told, often saying the kingdom of heaven is like unto or the kingdom of God is like unto. <clears throat> Where would we be if Jesus did not reveal these things to us? What would the apostles have to speak and write about? They expounded upon what Jesus said and what Jesus did. <clears throat> this, again, this is Jesus' word. Disciples are primarily listeners. So Jesus didn't come to show us how to live or even to tell us how to live. He didn't teach a way of life or a lifestyle Jesus came to give life, and his word Amen. is life. Amen. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, mm -hmm. and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Amen. Again in John 6, 63, it is the spirit that quickeneth, mm -hmm. the flesh profiteth nothing, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. Amen. In our text, notice that Jesus does not say, if my word continues in you. So the power of Jesus' word is not in question. Mm -hmm. It never ceases to do its work in everyone that believes it. His word will unceasingly continue to work good things and grow in every believer, renewing them, transforming them, conforming them, transporting them, teaching, strengthening, comforting, and more. So the question is, is, or is, the question is whether or not we will continue in it, yeah. not whether it will continue or not. And not surprisingly, the power to continue in Jesus' word is in believing his word. <clears throat> if you need patience and endurance to keep running the race, or strength to continue fighting, or weapons to fight with, or wisdom and strong faith to continue wrestling, protection from seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, all these are found in continuing in his word. <clears throat> but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, beloved brethren of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. No power like this comes from the law. <clears throat> In keeping of commandments, there is no comfort, no joy, no peace, no confidence, no fellowship with God. Fear comes from the law, and lack of confidence comes from the law. Guilt and doubt come from the law. We know 
we understand why there are so many different books and systems being sold today. See, there's, there's a different book or a different system for every, every different problem. But you've got some, some couples in the church having divorce. Oh, well, there's a book for that. But you've got a troubled teenager. There's a book for that. If you've got financial problem. There's a different book for that. If you're laden with sin and you can't stop sinning, we've got a whole series for that. If you want to be prepared about the, for the great tribulation that's coming on earth, there's a whole series about that. We've got all these separate answers for separate books, none of which are free, by the way. They're all being sold. We've got a separate answer for every problem. See, what is this is the result of not continuing in His Word. Because His Word has the solution to the human problem, which is sin. <clears throat> Jesus' word contains all the grace that we need. <clears throat> so anyone who wants to help the people of God will say the same things that Jesus has said and expound and glorify his word. Anyone who wants to help the people of God will put the gospel in front of them. In Paul's epistles, this is exactly what he does. <clears throat> we know this to be true from, from studying the epistles, whether it's Corinth or the Galatians or the Colossians or any of the other churches that uh, had confronted problems, Paul sets the gospel in front of them again because that's, that's the word of Christ. They had departed from his word. Amen. In Ephesians here it says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. That's that power that put Jesus there. God has sent that toward you. Amen. And that it's in the word of Christ. Amen. That's the, the way that it comes to you. <clears throat> that is to be continued in. <clears throat> According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. The knowledge of him is in the word of Christ. <clears throat> when you know Jesus, you don't need a different book for every problem that comes along because all the resources are in Jesus' word. And if you know him, then you have all those resources. Just briefly before I close, I want to comment on this word indeed. You shall be my disciples indeed. <clears throat> it means truly or surety, of a surety, and surely. Now this surety, this word indeed is for you. You are the one that needs the surety. <clears throat> God needs no surety of your status. He already knows. So Jesus gives us this word, indeed. <clears throat> you shall be my disciples, indeed, surely. If you continue in my word of a surety, truly, you are my disciples. And surely, I will teach you. For all the promises of God in him are yea and amen unto the glory of God by us. So Jesus says, surely, indeed, indeed. So, brethren, I say to you, continue in his word. Amen. Amen.